I am Jeff, excited for this first set of games, joined with me by Princess Peach. How you doing, Peach? I, I am Jeff. Am so happy to be here to get to the Suicide Squad. Oh, of course, of course. Wouldn't miss it for the world. So, um, first lineup here is going to be Nine Lives Against Northern Storm. And there's a lot of, a lot of new faces uh, joining this particular match this week. Is there anything in particular that you're excited to see that you think that, uh, you know, people should pay attention to? Um, I mean, we have three, three new people, three subs or well, permanent subs, I guess now, huh? Mm -hmm. Um, and I know nothing about any of them. <laughs> so, uh, I would definitely keep an eye on that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I know um, at least a little bit in terms of on over on Nine Live side, Foeden and Menards coming in here. Um, these are two players that have played uh, on GMA's uh, in GMA's tournaments in the past, and very formidable players. It's going to be exciting to see uh, just how much Nine Lives dynamic kind of changes around them because you know they they enter in as you know a very very potent top jungle duo. And so we'll see if Nine Lives maybe starts prioritizing the top side really, really heavily going forward. Uh, yeah. Um, do you do you think that these new players are going to switch up the dynamic? I know we could definitely say that uh, Nine Lives was kind of balanced around their previous top solo lane sides. Um, do you think that's kind of the same case with these players? Um, I don't know if... Yeah, I, I guess that would still look to be their strength. You just look down the ranks. You know, you've got uh, Platinum 3s in both top and jungle, uh, the highest ranks on the team. So it wouldn't surprise me if that is, you know, their their priority initially, especially because I think when you've got new people on a team like this, you maybe haven't had a ton of time to practice. It might be the easiest way to integrate them onto the team um, by letting them play you know, whatever is comfortable for them. If, if they're comfortable in a carry role, just try to chill uh, in the other spots, in the other lanes, and let Foe and let Menards kind of play almost like a solo queue game just <clears> to <throat> try to make things uh, as smooth as possible in the transition. Awesome. Jeff, we're ready to go into game, right? Yeah, sounds Heck good yeah. to me. Look, looks like we're going in. On the other side, we didn't talk about um, Von Hohenheim yet, something in on support. But this is another uh, guy who's been a part of the GMA platform for quite a while. Very, very celebrated player. Won, I believe, at least one championship, maybe two in the past. A lot of time in the mid lane, but switch over to support. I know that he has played support uh, in some official matches for us in the past. So definitely a potent addition there as well. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited to to see some people that I don't know. You know, as a as a newer person to the community, um, I'm excited to to see what these these uh, people can do. Yeah, so from your perspective, being a support player, um, try to take me through maybe what Hohenheim and WD Fan might be having to figure out with. You know, obviously, anytime a new player comes into a team, it can be tricky. But I feel like when it's a new member of the bot lane, especially, that's uh, that's a difficult transition. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of like innate like synergy that you just kind of have to to build up um, playing with which which whatever one that you are not. Um, you know, I from from what you've said in, in ranking um von hohenheim is you know he's plat so i mean you can tell he's got like decent mechanics you know that kind of come with that territory um we've seen wd fan like really you know he's some of these uh you know from the rankings northern storms 04 right now um wd fan has been kind of like the breath that has kept them in some of these games that they've been losing um i don't know i'm excited to see how how they are doing yeah, and if so, if you're fan um, or Hohenheim, I guess, are you looking at this game at this you know this first week with this new person and saying like we should just sit back and farm you know for for lane phase, not try to do anything crazy? Nah, I don't think uh, that fits WD fans' uh, mo. I think that <clears throat> I think that these two are gonna bust it up. <laughs> for for lack of proper term. Nice. 
yeah um chad did mention the bands um i also agree really interesting bands because i'm not sure of like obviously the nunu is at mixed link we know that um but i i like who on on uh northern storm plays vigar and in, in pantheon is that a van hohenheim um, band? i i believe the van hohenheim yeah he would be a threat to pull out the vigar support not too sure about the pantheon um and yeah, on the other, on the flip side of the coin, Foed and Menards, two brand new players to this Community Cup now. So if you're Northern Storm, I assume you've probably been doing a lot of scouting on OP.GG and stuff on yeah. these two players trying to figure out. And, and maybe they've seen, oh, Gwen, uh, Kane, let's get that out of there. Yeah, I am doing some some digging. I, I do see Van Hohenheim plays quite a bit of Vigar. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely something that could be could be played bot lane, you know. And that's interesting, right there. The the poppy picked by Menards after the Callista. Not the poppy isn't a good champion by itself, but do you feel like there's a possibility that the poppy was picked to make sure that Northern Storm couldn't pick it away, given how good of a counter it is to Callista? Yeah, I mean, I think poppy is good into Tristana and Sejuani. I mean, right off sure. of that, there's two of the five, you know, opposing teams champions that have have a dash or a jump or a movement ability that Poppy's going to be able to block. Um, two of three is still good, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Poppy's still sort of a flex pick as well. So it's nice to get that in the first rotation. Yeah. Um, it's also exciting to see Kulis. That's not really a character you see super often. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with something like Braum, you know, throwing your throwing the Braum into the enemy team and getting a pretty big Braum ult is something exciting to watch. Yeah, absolutely. So Callista Braum together. Uh, once again, you're you're the bot lane expert. How? I mean, you talked about the alt already, but in terms of say pre six, how does that synergy work out? Um. I I really think that Braum is better as a counter pick. Um, you know, I always think of Braum as kind of like the melee Janna, right? Really disengagey. Um, you know, right now on that team, sure you can block an Anivia Q. Um, you're looking to block those Sejuani ults. Um, we'll see if Northern Storm kind of adapts to the Braum pick and what they they pick next. Um, so it's not something that Braum has a pretty easy time blocking. Um, but that's my opinion on Braum. I, I don't think Braum is super great right now. Um, unless, I, I don't know, I just, I think he's better as a counter pick. Okay. TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate, I appreciate the details. So yeah, Zach and Oriana band away in this second half. Camille on the other side. They're is there any... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> They're scared of Menard, though. Look at all those jungle bands. Yeah, I mean, Menards is a really good player. Um, I don't know. I don't think he's played in GMA for, for a while now, but yeah, going back, I believe the last time I personally saw him play was he was playing AD carry and he was very, very impressive in that role. But, uh, I feel like generally players who are good in one role are usually pretty good in others as well. Malphite picked up for the side of Northern Storm. I would assume that's going top lane, I guess. Now, Hohenheim has a history of picking some weird stuff. So it wouldn't completely shock me if we had a Nivea support, but I really hope we don't. <laughs> For uh, nine lives bot lane, I also hope that because Anivia is pretty uh, pretty annoying to lane against. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing some chat. Someone is mentioning that Jeff is a married man now. So Jeff, congrats on getting married <laughs> from your GMA family. We all love that, that for you. <laughs> that is indeed true. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> so happy for him. So if it is a Nivea support, then, you know, the Braum pick is probably better than I think it is. Sure, yeah. But we'll see. And now, so, is this a poppy jungle, do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, set can jungle too, but I don't know. I know nothing about Menard, so... Maybe I do some... Maybe I yeah, do some... I, I would expect this is going to be poppy jungle, and man, this is... This is a lot of strong front line in front of this Callista. Aurelia picked up at the end, so it will be a Nivea support. And Malphite mid. Wow. 
we got a lot of tank characters in this game. <laughs> Not sure how many of them will actually build tank. I assume this Malphite is probably going to go mostly damage, but Malphite still gets sort of inherently tanky. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, if I'm CB Hickey, do you think do you think he goes tank here? Um, I feel like you kind of have to at least hybrid because. I think you have to go at least some damage, because otherwise your team is is gonna lack in in magic damage. Maybe um, I mean maybe this maybe they're like yo von Hohenheim carry us. I mean that's that's certainly possible, <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I do them... like I mean this is a Silas's dream right here, winning yeah. against a Malphite, getting to steal that ult away. That's, <sighs> that's one of the best ones to have. Yeah, and Sedwani too, mm -hmm. right? Really impactful ultimates. I mean, almost a I would say Aurelia's ult's pretty good too. If yeah, really, his ult can be can be useful. Um, yeah. I doubt that that'll be. I doubt we'll see Chaosix take that one away too often. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, someone in the chat did make note of having Brom and and three melee characters. Um, yeah, you're right. That's definitely a scary combo. But also, Sedwani passive with, you know, they also have three melee characters. Um, so that's exciting to see. They kind of. Looks like they almost like knew that they were gonna do those picks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, if I believe this should be correct, but um, Bromalt will block Aurelia, or not Bromalt, Brom Shield will block Aurelia ult. Correct? I believe so. Yeah. So that that could be very very useful as well. Yeah. It's just if if Northern Storm is and they are obviously like good players are gonna be paying attention to this. Like they have to lead with the Malphite ult. They can't even give Brahm a chance to block any of that that layered CC right from the Anivia AoE stun and the <clears throat> you know the Aurelia stun and the Sejuani ult. Um, I'm excited to see Hickey kind of be the playmaker for Northern Storm, um, which is maybe not something that we have seen on that team yet. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Now here's one thing that I'm a little surprised about. We saw the Poppy picked up already, and then uh, Northern Storm opted into Aurelia. And that just seems a little a little interesting, that you would pick a character who is almost completely dependent on dashing around fights and things uh, yeah. into Poppy. Absolutely. But, you know, then they have to make that, that decision, you know, is the Aurelia worth kind of, you know, is, is she the one that you want to stop dancing around in fights? Or... You know, is it the Sejuani dash or something on a reset? You know, I think that Menards has a a hard choice. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. We'll see. Do you think we'll see some uh, poppy slams into Anivia walls? Does that work if they're on enemy team? Uh, sure, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's impassable for both teams, right? So, yeah, that should work. It's not like a zero where, you know, one team can walk through it and the other can't. Ben Hohenheim's a double agent. Okay. Well, what do we think? Yeah. All right, we're we're getting some conspiracy <laughs> theories in GMA now. I'm excited. These these two teams are, you know, are they the ones? Are, mm, let me look at the. I should know this. The listing for where people are at for teams. Are these the two currently O four ones? Oh yeah, yeah. They are right. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, it's going to be, I don't know, do you, do you feel like this is a, a must win for these teams at this point? Yeah, I think so, right? I mean, as a player, like, it's not fun to lose two weeks in a row, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, even beyond the standings, it's uh, it's rough for, you know, team mm -hmm. morale and, and the mental to... Uh, to have that kind of losing streak going on. So a big week for both these teams, but it's also, it's, it's so tough because you have these new cogs put into the machine and, and trying to make things continue to flow, continue to uh, operate correctly. That's, that's going to be tough, but at least, you know, it's, it's relatively even that both teams are having to incorporate these new players at the same time. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see how those new cogs that you mentioned um, change everything up for these players and these teams, but skins, Jeff. Who wins the skin war? Oh, uh, there's no skin on Malphite, but there's no skin on Poppy or Set. Yeah. Poor, um, poor, poor choice. Poor showing. 
I guess I guess I'm gonna go with uh, with Northern Storm. I, I have a soft spot for Dragon Trainer Tristana, and they just have more skins overall. Pool Party Braum is is amazing. I was gonna say I'd be doing a disservice to my community if I didn't vote for the team that has <laughs> Pool Party Braum, right? Yeah, I mean, look at those sparkly <laughs> teeth. Look at look at that guy. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. The sparkly. I teeth. mean, you know. It's... <laughs> Anyways, okay. Who wins this game? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I I like Northern Storm's comp a little bit better. I just think it's uh more balanced there's more win conditions i feel like nine lives is very one dimensional and it's really good at that one dimension you know mm -hmm. just dive in blitzkrieg at them uh not to you know bring in a pun about a different team but uh um well everybody's running down mid lane for nine right. lives so they might be looking for a level one play which we haven't seen a lot of so i'd, I'd love to see something but i think they were spotted I think they pathed a little bit incorrectly trying to get into that bush. I don't think it mattered because Von Hohenheim was there. Um, but I think they know that they're in there. Yeah, it looks like, it's like Northern Storm is going to be satisfied to just run defense right here. Hohenheim does get that ward down in that brush, so they will know they're not waiting there. And it looks like everything will diffuse back to just a uh, standard jungle start. Looks like both junglers are planning to start bot side just based on where WD fan and Hohenheim are hanging around. Yeah, I was gonna say Kalissa didn't use her th her thing. Her, Until her just now, yeah. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> maybe she's gonna use it on Poppy. That would be brave. Uh oh, hold on. I gotta I gotta do a mod thing in the chat. Hold on. Hold on. How do I delete something in the chat? <laughs> so I was wrong. Mixlink is starting top side actually, so I like this. I like when junglers start on different sides because I feel like it makes the game a little more dynamic, makes it a little more exciting. Unpredictable, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, you're right, though. There hasn't really been any crazy level ones in, in any of the sets yet. Nothing. I believe crazy. we... I think there was one last week where maybe there was a, a kill or two that came through. Oh, you're right. That was the craziest level one. It may kind of made up for everything else. <laughs> Not happening. While we're kind of hanging out, waiting for some fun stuff to happen, uh, Twitch chat, we're so happy to have you here. Don't forget about our Feeding America um, things that we've partnered with for this split. Also, we do have our Jarvan 1v1 tournament happening this Tuesday. Here's a sign-up form posted in the chat for you gamers. Word on the street is there's going to be either a Jarvan skin gave giveaway or some RP on the line too, but you guys didn't hear it from me. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you did. Who knows? Got a leak about the J4 tournament. I'm excited to watch that, actually. That's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun to cast, too. Lane's so just far, everybody just... Yeah, everybody just hanging around, doing their thing. Early push out top for, for pointy. Looks like Poppy and we do have Menards there. coming in pretty early. Pointy's gonna have to respect this. Hasn't warded yet. And oh, this could get really, really scary. See if Foe Eden maybe flashes for the uh the Yep, he does get it without having to fight. I think Pointy's just dead here. Yeah, no chance for the Aurelia. Gonna dash around, maybe try to pick up a little CS, waste some time, but absolutely dead. Quick first blood for the new top lane of nine lives. Yeah, so, uh, I think Pointy played that super well. Like, he knew that he was dead, wasn't worth wasting Flash or anything. Uh, just kind of let himself go. Yeah, that's a tricky one, because I, I wasn't really watching closely enough to see how the lane ended up where it was, but that's just a nightmare spot for it to be, I think. You know, oh. that was uh, Chaotix actually gets a solo kill onto CB Hickey in the mid lane, and CB Hickey did use the flash. Now Chaotix is going to try to flash away from Mixling. Flash back in from the Sejuani. Needs one more attack. Oh, the W with the heal, and Menards is there. And now Mixlink in a lot of trouble, has already used his flash. Will be able to use the W to get away, get enough distance. Yeah, uh, um, poor Hickey flashing, like, just as the... Pointy up top. Sorry, Pony almost ahead. got uh, taken down that, yeah. again. Was able to flash away <laughs> from the face, or excuse me, from the uh, the haymaker. I was just saying it was unfortunate that Hickey flashed like a hair too late. 
um, and, and, and did pass away to, to Sir Chaos 6 in the mid lane. You hate to see it. Menard's now looking down bottom. There was a ping there a moment ago. I think he did get around the Scuttlecrab vision, so that could be scary. Nope, looks like Fan and Hohenheim are aware that it's coming. Jubilee walks up, does get the Winter's Bite down. Good wall from Hohenheim. We'll just shut off any further aggression. <laughs> He's just saying hi. Poppy just wanted to check on his boys bot lane. <laughs> And once again, though, these lanes just keep being in inconvenient positions for Northern Storm. We saw it happen with Pointy Ball earlier. Excuse me, just Pointy, not Pointy Ball anymore. Uh, saw it happen down bot right now. But meanwhile, Foweden could be in a little bit of trouble. Mixlink going in, but yeah, Pointy just doesn't really have the ability to get in right now. Wants to pick up that wave. Again, another smart play. They just were like, you know, let's not force this too hard. Nothing too crazy. Kind of backed it up. Yeah, no flashes on either side while Foe Eden does have his available, so. Cleanse was burned by Burn the Heretic and Flash down in the bot lane, actually. So a nice job from the bot lane of Northern Storm to get all the safety off of that Callista. Interesting the way Von Hohenheim's sitting. Do you see how he's, like, in the alcohol? Oh, jump in again from Chaos, actually. He's got the Malphite ultimate. He uses it against Hickey and gets another solo kill. Chaos, excuse me, with a pair of... Early on in this game, it's 309 lives. Um, I, I missed the mid lane play, but. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it was just Chaos just getting in, got the uh, the initial knock up with the abduct, and then uh, stole the unstoppable force, used it against Malphite. Now he's roaming down bottom, and this, is, this could get scary. Or uh, he's just gonna hang around with the dragon. Oh, he got over the wall. There's nothing to roam to, though. Yeah, maybe just expecting a gank. Yeah, just protecting Heretic and Libre while they pick up that wave. And, and something I just learned, um, I didn't realize as uh, Silas, you could take the ult of someone who didn't have their ult yet. Yep. <laughs> he, he was level 5, I didn't know that. that you could yep, that. it's pretty rude. <laughs> pretty rude. Mixlink trying to start up this dragon. Um, is the only one around, but it's going to go down pretty slow. Have CB Hickey walking down now, hoping to help. As long as he can tank it up for a little bit, it should be fine. No one yeah. from Nine Lives in the zip code. Well, pointy Good stun from Pointy onto Menards. Does get messed up, but now gets in. There's the ultimate. Menards with a nice smite, just trying to keep himself alive. And a, <laughs> just able to stay alive long enough to flash over the wall. So Pointy uses a lot of cooldowns, gets nothing for it. And now you have Chaosix and Foeden looking to collapse in onto this Aurelia. But I think that... Pointy does have a way out. CB Hickey is nearby. Oh, that was very spooky of Pointy. But I mean, he got out. <laughs> Wasted got out, out and, flash. you know, you, you forced the flash from Menard, so that's something. Yeah. And also, Mixlink gets to go in and uh, steal away this red buff now. Mixlink with a counter jungling, okay. You like to see it? Is Poppy going to get there in time, though? No. Last plan oh. out. Oh, Mixlink might be Going getting a little front. greedy now, though. Does have priority in the bot lane, so it'll be tough for Cuba Libre or Heretic to come up if they want to, but looks like Menards doesn't have any idea where Mixlink is right now. This Anivia support hurts. Now they've found Mixlink. Winter's Bite lands, so won't be able to finish off that control ward, and Chaosix roaming down from the mid lane. Up in the top lane, Pointy getting taken pretty low again, as Foeden looking for the kill. Pointy Ball is so, so low and just gets punched to death by the set. The solo laners of nine lives are just going off so far in this game. Menards could be in trouble here, though. He is behind enemy lines. They do know where he is, but don't yeah. quite have the ability to lock him down back there. Poppy actually went into their blue side after <laughs> checking uh, red and seeing it was gone. He just uh, took Mixlinks' uh, blue yeah. instead. Yeah, so. <laughs> went right across. Nice little trade. Just trade some buffs. So you got Mixlink looking towards the bot side right here, but walks over a ward, so will be absolutely no threat at this point. Calista is six now too. I wonder how close Braum is to six. Maybe we'll see some some spicy plays bot with the Braum ult and stuff. I oh, really CB Hickey could be in a lot of trouble here. 
Menard's coming around. Oh, nice job by CB Hickey to get the ult down first, <laughs> and Menard's just a little bit of an overreach there. That was that was a close one right there, because it was who got the charge on who first. Nice ult oh. for Mixlink, predicts the dash out of Chaosix, doesn't quite land the W. Here's Pointy, can he get the stun? No, Chaosix flashes away properly, but there is the Vanguard's edge, and Chaosix, I just don't think he has enough to get away from all three. Big shutdown going over a Pointy ball, 450 gold. That'll really help this Aurelia get back into the game. Um, smart of Hickey to just kind of turn on the Poppy that was behind him. Just uh, one shot her under the turret. Yeah, that was that was funny because it just came down to who pressed their dash on the other person first, basically. Although I guess actually Menards might have gotten the dash first, but because it's Malphite, literally the name is Unstoppable Force. Yeah, we do see actually Hickey is going tank. Oh, you're right. Like tank Malphite. It's a little bit surprising to me. Yeah, I mean they do have a lot of AD damage, so. Menards is trying to walk up towards this Rift Herald, but I think it's gone. Oh my oh god, my never god. mind. He somehow got in range to smite that away. He used the charge to on Hickey to get in range, took it away. Big time ult from Foweed, and they've already gotten one kill. Chaosix, can he get over the wall? The Oh my gosh, they're just gonna clean up everything. Pointy just nowhere to go. What a play from the top side of nine lives. Ooh. And now set is I mean, both their soul laners are in a really powerful position to carry the rest of this game. Yeah, absolutely. The 4-0 no set. <laughs> yeah, 4-0 -no set, 3-1-0 Silas. They've got that Rift Herald that they're going to summon up in the mid lane. Should get probably one more plate here before anyone can get back. Menards is now harassing Mixlink in the jungle as well. Two level advantage. This Sejuani just has to seed territory. A little surprised actually lane. that Menards is walking away for now. Mixlinks is in his jungle. In counter jungle. Oh, smited it. Okay. In the mid lane, CB Hickey looking to take down Chaosix. Almost gets him down, but not able to do it. Use the ultimate, and this turret is just hanging by a thread right now. She is barely hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> Chaosix really was just trying to take that turret. He didn't really care what happened, but he still got out too afterwards. Yeah, managed to escape, and uh, yeah, CB Hickey had to expend the unstoppable force to fend him off. For now, that plate will still be up for another minute 30, so Chaosix going back. Actually, they catch on to burn the heretic in the bot lane. That Cube Libre could be in trouble. Around the Nivel wall, he is able to escape for now. Good cleanse by heretic there. And it's, man, this gold lead, 4,000 at, at 1245. That's that's a big number. And it's it's on who you want it to be on, too, right? There are two solo laners. And ours, once again, just dancing around. I thought that he overstepped last time, but was able to turn the fight. Oh, WD fan, that's really aggressive. They get it out of the poppy. Nice ult, and now they trap him. There's the wall from Hohenheim. Oh, WD fan is going in solo, has to flash away. That turret eventually does go down in the mid lane. Chaosix keeps at it. And now nine, or excuse me, Northern Storm trying to take their second Drake. They got the first one. CB Hickey looking at Chaosix right now. But everybody's very low. This could get scary if Chaosix feels aggressive. <laughs> that was a really good wall by the Nibia during that fight too. Well, oh, not quite in the bush, Heretic. Yeah, that I thought, was. I thought Fan was gonna jump on him. <laughs> <laughs> that was really nice skirmishing from uh, from Northern Storm. I thought there, you know, given the deficit they were already in, to even be able to pick up scraps right now mm -hmm. feels great. Scraps are still scraps when you're behind, though, right? Exactly, exactly. You just gotta. You can't ever really. I mean, especially when Baron isn't even on the map. You can't yeah. come back in a game like this in one fight. It's got to be little things here, picks here, positive exchanges here. Do we think that this set and this Silas are going to be able to carry nine lives teams, a uh, team fight? Well, if I'm not mistaken, I, um, you know, Aurelia will eventually outscale the set, mm -hmm. right? Agreed. So it's it's just about how can Foweden press this advantage while he has it.
uh, obviously it's it's an enormous advantage. It's not like it's just a, a little like 300 gold advantage or something like that. It's an enormous advantage for Foe Eden right now. So right. it'll take a while for Pointy to catch up. It's two levels in the top lane. It was two levels in the jungle. It's down to one now. But, you know, Chaotix, he is going to stay an incredible threat, especially with all these ultimates to steal away. And the bot lane is at least doing all right. WD Fan and Hohenheim do have an advantage. They have the kill. They have the farm advantage. But they haven't, you know, run over Cuba Libre and Her Heretic yet. Hohenheim looking for a wall play, it looks like. He does get it down. Oh, nice. Ooh. Nice block on that stun by Cuba Libre. But Mixlink could be in trouble now. Menards is behind enemy lines. There's the block again. The charge. The Sejuani not very tanky. Not tanky enough. Pointy going in. Looking for the big play. CP Hickey's here. There's the ultimate. Can they take down Menards? They do get it, and Pointy is able to flash the safety. So a really, really nice roam from CB Hickey to get there just in time to make this exchange even. Now Foe Eden trying to run away. Chaotix finally answering the roam. A little bit late in my opinion, but uh, looks like he will get there in time. Oh. And there's the stolen unstoppable force. Destroys Pointy. There is the root double kill for Chaotix. I'm sorry, I doubted you. It all works out fine. Big time positive exchange again for Nine Lives. Although, nice job by WD Fan and Hohenheim in the bot lane. I think we, I think Mr. Hickey was out for blood. He wanted that, uh, that set. And, um, unfortunately, Chaosix caught him with the Malphite ult. You hate to see it. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing that, uh, is so fun or, you know, depending on your perspective, scary about going up against a Silas who can steal away an ult like Malphites is, you know, generally you don't expect Malphites to build damage. They do sometimes, of course, but... You know, generally, Malphite ult is just for the knockup. It's not a ridiculous amount of damage. But when you've got an AP character like Silas pulling out that ult, it hurts a lot more. Yeah, it's it's almost like <clears throat> um, Nine Lives has the nuke now instead of Northern Storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 5, 1, and 0 on Chaosix now on this Silas. 4, 0, 4 for Foe Eden. And Menards. Menards is, you know, sitting at 1, 3, 2, but I feel like Menards has played as good of a game as anybody on the team, despite the scoreline maybe looking differently. They're jumping in, they're looking for Foe Eden. Does still have the Haymaker available, so we'll probably be able to survive. Oh my gosh, that's so much damage. Now ult Pointy back towards the turret. No, Pointy does take him down, nice job. They eventually, they stick with it. And they eventually do melt away all that set health with that huge shield. Yeah, and that shutdown goal going on to Pointy. Who has kept up in CS, you know, being being down in kills and, and experience, but he's kept up in CS and now he just got that big shutdown. That's scary. You know, because yeah. we talked about how Aurelia is going to outscale set eventually. You know, they're just kind of speeding that up a little bit is, is definitely not something that Nine Lives wants to do. <laughs> and I think it's also really, really important for Northern Storm that they were able to get the first two dragons even though they were behind pretty much the entire early game they were able to get these first two dragons which means they're not on as much of a, a clock as you might expect from a team in an early game deficit mm -hmm. chaotix goes in looking for cb hickey with the knockout but nice job dodging away from the malphite there may be a dive coming down bottom though menards and heretic and gibulibre all running towards this malphite they want this last out lane turret out lane turret outer turret but now they're actually pulling off. Yeah, the game the game off. feels a lot closer than the... I mean, I guess 4K isn't that big of a gold lead, but it definitely doesn't feel like either team is like really like stomping right now. Yeah, well, the gold lead is 3.8K right now. It was a solid 4K about maybe six minutes ago. So if you're Northern Storm, you're looking at that and you're saying, okay, like relative to what it was before, that's fine. You know, I always look at gold leads as in terms of, you know, relative gold lead, percentage gold lead. And being down 4k now is relatively less than being down 4k was six minutes ago. Yeah, I... Absolutely, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Big brain play right there. So yeah, Cloud Drake coming up any second now. Or excuse me, it was already taken, so the next one will also be a Cloud Drake. We will have a... Cloud Soul coming through in this game. Do you feel like that's particularly advantageous for either side? Cloud Drake. 
Uh, I mean, it, it's it's never not a good thing. I, I don't really see either team like being better than the other one with the Cloud Drake passive. Chaotix dashing in onto CB Hickey. They do have a teleport coming to answer from Pointy, and Chaotix could be in trouble now. Nice job stealing away the Unstoppable Force just as an escape as Pointy was there. You don't want to give Pointy any more shutdown gold right now. Right. I mean, set... I don't know. Do you think either... What team do you think is scarier with Cloud Drake? Just... Initial impression? I feel like if you give Poppy extra movement speed, it like really really increases her uh her threat level meanwhile pointy and menards are just dueling in the jungle and pointy is gonna get a kill gonna go down eventually but it took three members of nine lives eventually and a flash and uh here's something interesting hohenheim is solo pushing up in the top lane against the fed foe and his <laughs> anivia might be in trouble now might have overreached gets the stun down but oh flashes flash. away from the haymaker but when's the stun come back up? There it is. And Foeden. Oh, the wall actually. I don't know if you wanted to put it there. You might have wanted to put it. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Hohenheim is back in GMA. Pulling the same old tricks. The support <laughs> Anivia solo kills the set. He had Rift Herald too. I just realized that's why he was top. Oh my goodness. Well, that was, uh, that's a big play, momentum-wise, at least. That that makes the team feel better, I think, as a whole, seeing that just happen. Okay, gamers, for scouting, we're banning Van Hohenheim's Anivia, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the more things change, the more they seem the same. Is it 2018? I don't know, but Hohenheim's still making big plays on Anivia in GMA tournaments. And that, yeah. In addition to that kill, got got that turret up in the top lane very, very low. So, really nice job, I think, by Northern Storm in the last five, seven minutes or so of really staunching the bleeding. Because it was looking a little scary. The 4k lead is now just like 3k. So... And if you're pointy, you're you're probably feeling okay about fighting anybody. Hohenheim is way behind enemy lines again. And all alone again. Menards flashes over. They do not like what this Anivia is doing. Oh, nice job by Menards getting over the wall. But here comes help. Mixlink on the side. They just have to be careful not to overcommit now. You are still in a gold deficit. Hohenheim oh. does get slowed by the Chaotix ult. And eventually they will... Finally find this Anivia. I don't think if you Northern Storm you want to re-engage this, so The bird overreaches just a little bit, but meanwhile pointy is just getting free time in the bot lane off of that entire distraction So see it is uh nine lives gonna kind of like force something here because they you know Ben Hohenheim just died and, and pointy showing bot you do have the Callista secure on neutral objectives, so that's always a nice confidence boost when you try to force those contested objectives, but obviously they have decided to back away for now. A lot of pings from both teams coming down on the Cloud Drake spawn coming up in about 40 seconds, so obviously it's going to be a priority for both sides. Pointy is on a wall. He doesn't know it, so it could be scary. The she or excuse me, the face breaker was missed by Foe Eden. Like this dragon fight's gonna be spicy. Now here's the thing, if you're Northern Storm, you already have two drakes. Do you really risk it all on this particular dragon fight? Uh I don't Oh Menards know. jumps in on the Mixlink actually. So here is the fight. It is engaging. Nice job from CB Hickey into the back line. Gets two with the unstoppable force. Oh my god, everybody's piling in and Pointy Ball picks up two quick kills. I will eventually stop calling him Pointy Ball. I'm so sorry. I'm stuck in 2018. <laughs> Von Hohenheim's taking me back in time with these Anivia plays. That's just an excuse. I've been doing it before that, that happened. But <laughs> no, Foe no. getting caught. Stun over the wall from Pointy. Foe Eden, huge Haymaker shield. Tries to take Mixlink back over the wall. WD fan could be in trouble. Chaotix jumps in. Does take down the AD carry of Northern Storm. What can Pointy do now? Could be in trouble. Jumping in on Foe Eden. Another face breaker. Excuse me. Uh, Haymaker shield. But they do eventually take down the raid boss set. Menards has to walk away from CB Hickey. And this should be the fourth Drake going over to Northern Storm. Third Drake. Spice for them. Game of League of Legends. Chaotix is still full health. 
still full health and does have the Malphite ult available, so this could still be scary. There he goes, and oh only gets on a mix link, but still could kill the jungler, does do it, and the stopwatch will buy time. Chaotix in trouble, teleport in from pointy. Looking in on Menards, gets the stun, but gets the dash interrupted. Chaotix still just working over the side, and nine lives, they have recovered enough that they are back out on the map. Can they, oh, not quite so close, pointy dashes as the recall. Finishes so Chaotix gets away with it and does have teleport available to rejoin. Thornmail picked up for Menard, so that's going to make things difficult for WD Fan and Pointy going forward. Teleport coming into the pit. This is going to be another huge fight. They do finally claim it. Now can they get out? CB Hickey flashes away. Nice. Braum ult catches two. CB Hickey is going to go down. If they can get away with just one death, they'll probably take it. Hohenheim is out of mana, so not going to be able to pull off any magic this time around. Gonna get dove under the sour. Oh, I think no. this Anivia is going to get cooked up extra crispy, but it's still it's only two kills for that third Drake. And it ended on the bot side, so you can't really run to Baron effectively if you're nine lives. Ooh, mixed like getting caught against the wall there. Had to flash. Ooh. Had to flash, glacial prison used to disengage. I'm not really sure why uh Mixlink decided to walk back down into that quadrant of the map. Sam, I'm I'm unsure. There's there's nothing to fight over there anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, but in any case, still, you know, if if I'm Northern Storm, I'm feeling okay about how that last crazy three minutes of the game went. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they they got the third Drake, and you know now they're at Soul Point next Dragon. Good, Gotta good give a shout out to Chaotix though. Did such a good job of just holding the line there, basically one v four until his team came back. They didn't win the ensuing fight, but they were given a second chance at it because of this Silas play. Chaosix could be in trouble now. If they know he's there, they're gonna find him no matter what. Can dash over the wall. Oh my gosh. Chaosix so slippery. <laughs> they're doing Baron? Uh, I think they were just trying to clear war okay. and someone actually accidentally attacked the Baron. Oh yeah, Sunfire, whatever it's called. Bowden is on the back side, actually. Could get caught, but no, they will just let him walk away. A little nudge from Sejuani. Big bot lane push from the minions, so someone should probably go clean that up. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of golden experience lost. Pointy walking that way, but it looks like actually they'll have CB Hickey go pick it up. To your point earlier, Malphite has indeed gone completely full tank, and uh, it's probably for the best because the farm number is, is very... Unfortunate for CB hurts. Hickey at this point. Hohenheim again catching oh, no. out Menards, and this could be trouble. Pointy is just destroying people right now. Menards behind enemy lines. Big time play there from Northern Storm. I think Nine Lives just overreaching a little bit. And even without the Malphite anywhere nearby, Northern Storm catches some more kills. Now they're on to the Baron, and they're going to dare Nine Lives to walk up to him. Looks like Nine Lives has no interest in doing so. They're going to let this go big swing for for northern storm you know getting baron and you know they'll have a, they'll have baron up for for soul point too now can they get out hohenheim could be in trouble here does have the eggs so they'll have to kill him a second time oh what a haymaker from foeen takes out two gonna get three mix link is not gonna be able to get away from this so they get the baron but they'll only have one baron buff available going forward it's on cb hickey down in the bot lane oh uh, and he had teleport hickey did that whole time that fight happened. Boy, that's interesting. I wonder if there was like a. At least it's shit showing for me that he has teleport up. Yeah, Maybe I see it as well. Okay. Maybe some. And Menards jumps in, and now CB Hickey might have overstayed. And if they lose all five Baron buffs here before they even get a chance to walk towards a turret, it would be so sad. Cuba Libre just barely misses that Winter's Bite, though. And CB Hickey does have Unstoppable Force, so probably will be able to get away from this eventually. Wall Slam doesn't land that time, and CB Hickey will walk away. Bonus movement seed from the Q. Inhibitor turret went down in the mid lane, though. So Chaosix and Foe Eden continue to flex their muscles out of these solo lane leads that they accrued early in the game. Right, and now we're about to go to Soul Point. We don't have Malphi L2, so... You will see how impactful that is for, for Northern Storm. 
Now Fight Alt is a relatively short cooldown at this point, so I would imagine by the time everyone recongregates, it will be available. The other oh, thing you, you you always have to keep a track of, keep a track of, keep track of now, is uh, how long until Chaotix can steal the Malphite ultimate again. Ooh. Oh, actually, Foeden just takes down Hohenheim. A little revenge for that earlier solo kill by the Anivia. And Mixlink has got to be respectful here. Mixlink and WD Fan could get chased down pretty quickly. CB Hickey is in that same territory and doesn't have the Unstoppable Force to get away with this time. No flash either. There's the last Baron buff. And it's all gone. The power play is not going to be very powerful. Pointy will pick up a turret at least, though. <clears throat> yeah, Northern Storm just kind of getting caught. You know, Nine Lives is doing a really great job grouping. Pointy looking for a play on the Foe, and he knows that the ultimate is not available. That Haymaker is just enormous. What does Pony have left? Can't quite land the last stun. And second Drake goes over two nine lives as well so they stop the drake stacking at least for now rage blade completed by burn the heretic that's a big deal nervous i still feel like this game is anyone's <laughs> i know they're tw it's 22 to 12 but you know with with uh northern storm having soul point next dragon mm -hmm. still feel like it's kind of anyone's game and the gold lead is 5k now but Still, it's in a relative sense, it's less than it was when it was 4k at 12 minutes. Right, and even in to uh, t towers. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting, haven't really seen either of these 80 carries go off in a fight yet. So I'm wondering which one between WD Fan or Burn the Heretic might be able to, uh, to carry a fight, because it's been mostly all about. I feel pointy and chaotics and and Eden making the big plays so far. Yeah, um, I feel like it's really hard to like reset on that team as Tristana. Yeah, that's a good point. That team, you know what I mean? Like if you jump into Poppy, then you can't really jump out. Yep, and there's so many shields, so much healing that you can't really be that confident. You know, it's like, oh, I need two more autos on this guy. Oh wait, no, he just got a 800 health shield. Mm hmm. WD Fan is a little bit far forward, but not far enough that he will get caught out. Pointy still split pushing up in the top lane. And I think we did see in that last exchange between Pointy and Foeden, as strong as Foeden still is, if this Aurelio lands the abilities, Pointy's at the point where he has outscaled in a straight up 1v1. Yeah, we saw that kind of in the top side fight. Chaosic's looping around though, so Pointy has to be a little bit careful. Hohenheim trying to Provide some cover. They're oh. so close to each other, neither one has any idea that they're there. Oh, it's making me nervous. Deputy Fan walking up now as well. So they have a good idea that someone <laughs> is uh, trying to pull something cheeky off down there. Meanwhile, CB Hickey and Mixlink in the bot side. Oh, Deputy Fan does get caught out. So much damage. Gets rooted. Flash over from Chaotix. That's worth. Gets the solo kill. Nice job. This Silas, 9, 1, and 6 now, just been dominating throughout the entire match. That's an open inhib in the mid lane that will go down. Ugh. The fan has all everything up to, like, alt, flash, heal. You know what I mean? Yeah, the initial damage was just so much. Now for- Oh, Mo! CB Hickey stopped for a moment, but now they may have overreached. Nine lives is all getting taken pretty well, but the exhaust on to Pointy. He will not be able to clean up. Great use of that by Cuba Libre, and they're just going to clean up the rest. Scrambled egg is Hohenheim at the end of it all. Quadra kill for Heretic. There's the big play from the 80 carry. What a job from Nine Lives putting their foot down at the end after... Maybe this game got a little closer than they might have expected after the initial lead. There goes WD Fan, but a uh, heroic effort, not rewarded. Nice job from Nine Lives. <clears throat> wow. We almost got another Penta kill. Yeah, and on another AD carry. <laughs> well, that was, that was an interesting game. Yeah, at least the... Um client let us look at stats afterwards yeah that's that's also hashtag blessed um that's set damage i mean not yeah not surprising i guess given the game flow
Boeden and Chaos leading the way in damage. Hohenheim actually the third most damage on that Anivia. So the ghost of the past coming out with Hohenheim pulling out that blue bird. Made some big plays, not quite big enough. Nine lives takes game one. I'll play by both teams too. It was <clears throat> I, I felt I don't know, I felt like it was anyone's game up until Northern Storm won. Or not Northern Storm, Nine Lives. Oops, <laughs> canceled this caster. <laughs> yep, so Nine Lives takes game one with the two new players, both uh, showing themselves to be very, very capable replacements here. Going for the rest of the Community Cup. Nice showing from Hohenheim as well, also stepping in in his first game of uh, this particular, I don't want to say split, I guess I'll just say cup again, even though I don't like reusing words. So we'll have game two coming up for you guys shortly.